we have tended to enforce lane discipline so that people do not cross the yellow line, the yellow continuous line. That is the approach we've been doing. And uh, it, it is, it's helped, in a, in, it has helped to, to slow down drivers. Our visibility has, help, has also helped to deter those motorists who are misbehaving. Uh, the challenge we have, and uh, we suspect this could be the case, but we are waiting for the full report. Either this driver was freewheeling, or the brakes failed. And freewheeling, why do people want to do freewheeling? They want to do freewheeling because they want to save on cost, on fuel cost. And we have information they are at uh, Salga, around Salga area. There are several dens which sell this illegal fuel. It's a matter that we are also taking with the relevant authorities to be addressed. We have Francis Major, Director General of the National Transport and Safety Authority here in studio. Uh, so thank you for sticking with us on this discussion. Let's talk about that particular issue, which is big, especially along at Salga, along that Nakuru Eldoret Highway. What is the solution for this? When somebody, when it's happening, I mean, there's nothing the NTSA can, officers can do at that particular time. So what's, what's the solution for that issue of free willing? Well, I think uh, instead of addressing the issue of wheeling, let's look at what, uh, what is it that we can do and what are, what are the solutions to uh, the carnage that we are seeing. They are what we call in road safety, the four E's of safety, road safety. The first one is education. We must not relent and continuously go ahead and educate the members of the public the risk, the dangers that road safety uh, poses to us. The other issue is enforcement. We must continuously enforce the law so that those people who are uh, uh, disobedient to the law uh, can be apprehended and arrested. The other issue is uh, engineering. Uh, some of the road designs need to be looked at, and uh, we are happy that uh, the information we have is that uh, in this section of the road, uh, Salga, uh, a, a public tender will be going out in, uh, I think, in a week's time by the Kenya National Highways Authority to look and uh, correct some of the challenges of that particular section of the road. The very other very important area, and I think that's why Virji is here, is uh, emergency and post-crash care. The way we handle victims by the, from the time you pull them from a, a, a road accident and the time t they are taken to hospital is very critical. That is what we call the golden hour. How they are treated is very, very important. And their survival depends on how they are treated at that particular moment. So let's con we will continue enhancing and uh, encouraging people to, to enforce the four E's of road safety. And it is very comprehensive. Uh, that is the only way we can manage some of these challenges. All right. There's one of our viewers here. It's called the Kelvin Kema says on Twitter, since the NTSA's inception, we have witnessed more accidents, more concerned about alcohol. There seems to be such uh, utterances saying that the NTSA is focused more on catching drunk drivers and that mm -hmm. there's more happening than drunk driving. What's your take on that? That is far from the truth. In fact, if you look at our statistics, uh, since we came on board, we have continuously reduced accidents uh, and they've actually year by year, there's been a reduction. Uh, that is not to say that we can do better. Uh, there is still a lot that needs to be done. The last financial year, 2016-2017, Accident reduced by 10%. But uh, it's not just fatalities that are increasing, are decreasing. If you look at the slight injuries and the serious injuries, there's a general trend of decline. Uh, and this is happening in the backdrop of two other factors that are important. Uh, the, 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 the vehicle population in this country is on an increase. And when there is an increase in vehicle population, the risk factors are increasing. If you look also the the, the, the kilometer per road, or the road network in this country. It is an increase. The government actually has invested significant investments to open up networks. And once that network increases, the risk factors are also bound to increase. Despite that happening, and, uh, and obviously also the growth in population, as the population grows, the risk factors are increasing. Despite that, we've been able consistently to reduce, although marginal, to reduce the accident st statistics. On the issue of alcohol blow, 
uh, it is one of the risk factors that we've identified. And it is not true to say that that is the only thing that we do. Uh, and it is actually a serious issue. And uh, if you look at, if I can give an example of this week again, there was an accident in Mombasa, a place called Bonje, which has been identified as a black spot. This driver killed two people. When this driver was tested, he was drunk. So it is not right to see it or to try and think that drinking alcohol is a lighter or is, is a minor traffic offense. It is actually very serious because it impairs the ability of the driver to react appropriately when uh, confronted with a, a road situation. All right. Uh, let's, let's, let's turn to Safia Varji on this. What is your take on that? And also tell us how much of a budget, maybe not the exact figures, but how big of the budget uh, by the Red Cross is, you know, uh, taken or streamed towards emergency response in terms of road accidents? It's, uh, it's quite a large budget. I don't have the exact figures, but um, if you look at the, the work that our emergency ambulance uh, undertakes, at least 80% is spent on uh, responding to, to accidents. Uh, if you look at it in line with the government figures of how much is spent on, how much of our GDP is spent on um, the consequences or repercussions of uh, road accidents, then you're, I think it was about 4% uh, if I'm not wrong. So, I mean, we're talking about a huge amount of money that, and funds that can be used in development, in education, that is now spent on um, health uh, healthcare and um, rehabilitation of victims of road accidents. All right. Uh, Mr. Gitao, in your view, and, and uh, this could be very important for, for, for the entire nation as, as, as we move towards the festive season, is it that Kenyans do not learn from the factors that we've seen that lead to a lot of these accidents? Or is it that, uh, you know, the authorities, both the police and the NTSA, do not enforce the rules enough? You know, let's say the general population does learn from the past experience. But obviously, it's worrying to see increasing numbers or regular accidents happening all over, you know, all over the place. We need to reflect and ask ourselves, what are we not doing right? What is it that uh, we as drivers, we as you know, pedestrians are not, uh, uh, you know, are not uh, aware as we travel? And I would imagine, like I said, uh, stress is a major factor, perhaps preoccupation with other issues that don't uh, uh, directly, uh, you know, uh, don't directly um, relate to what one is doing, could be, you know, absence of, uh, absent mindedness could be another problem. Uh, but generally, there must be issues that one is handling uh, that uh, take away the attention from what, uh, you know, they should be doing at that time, especially those who are in control of machines that are likely to, you know, to be damaging if not properly handled. From where you sit, what are some of the viable solutions to this issue, never-ending issue of road carnage? I think it is important for everyone to be aware that uh, the individual who is uh, directly impacted by an accident, first of all, uh, can, may not be able to uh, live the life as he has known it before. That means his life has changed completely. The people around him, the significant people around him are also affected and are called upon to do a lot more, maybe support him medically, support him uh, in his uh, you know, uh, way of life, especially if he's uh, uh, on a wheelchair or uh, has to be hospitalized for a long time. And so the costs are very, very wide. They're not just uh, the impact, or not just the statistics that we hear so many people ha are survivors or have lost their lives. The costs spread all over. And uh, you can imagine dependents who lose their breadwinners. So the emotional cost is far beyond what we can quantify uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the road carnage and the related uh, uh, issues. All right, Sophia, solutions? What is your take on that? Um, maybe coming back to a first responder perspective. Um, first responders are usually community members, the drivers, the fellow passengers. I think we would want to encourage uh, everybody to at least have a basic level of first aid so that when you do respond, you're doing so in a constructive and useful manner. Um, more than that, I think while um, 
other partners are focusing on enforcement and engineering. Uh, as citizens, we need to take personal responsibility for our safety on the road. Uh, we're losing young, productive Kenyans, breadwinners, and um, these, this is so prevent preventable that we just, as citizens, we need to take personal responsibility for how we conduct ourselves on the roads. All right, let's now cross live to Nakuru. Uh, of course, the home county where that uh, latest very uh, uh, very grisly accident did happen at Salga on the Nakuru Alert Highway. Let's now bring in uh, Caroline uh, Cherotich, uh, who was one of the first responders uh, from the St. John's Ambulance. Thank you for joining us, Caroline. Maybe you can just uh, paint for us a picture uh, of the latest from that accident. Caroline, I don't know if you can hear me. What is the latest? If you can paint for us the picture, please. Hello. All right, Caroline, um, what's the latest from that accident at Salga that, as we understand, has left uh, 16 people dead, according to the National Transport and Safety Authority, and 17 from uh, our sources who are telling us? What's the latest there? <laughs> ambapo kuliuzisha lori lori flani ilikuwa inateremka ili fail breaks ana ilibai ilikuwa imebeba logs from ilikuwa inatoka from Eldoret heading to Nakuru ili fail breaks na ndipo saika ilikuwa kwa climbing lane yeah na hapo ndio ilisababisha ile accident na tumeweza kupata Zile, 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 zile numbers ambazo ni tofauti, tumembua kwamba watu kumina sita uh, wamepoteza maisha yao, lakini tu, kuna duru ambazo ni sema watu kumina saba wamepoteza maisha yao. Which is the correct figure? Sisi wakati tulifika pale, tulipata waliopoteza maisha yao, walikuwa 13, wale tulie sabu, sisi wenyewe tukaweka kwa ambulances mm -hmm. na zile magari za polisi, walikuwa 13 on the spot. Alafu mmeza kufanya maybe follow-ups kwa mahospitali pengine kujua jinsi walivyo, hadi kufikia sasa? Tu, nimeweza kupigiwa na DC wa Molo mwendo wa saa 12 unusu hivi akaniambia wale waliofika kwa uma hospitali watatu wamefariki na wengine bado wako hali mautute na si, sijui witnesses wamewaambia nini kuhusu what exactly happened kilichotendeka ni nini Witnesses wale tuambia kuna lorry flan ile ilikuwa imebeba locks ilikata brakes kutoka pale GAC mbele na hapo kulikuwa wakati ilipokata brakes mbele yao kulikuwa na ma NTSA wale wa madio wa NTSA waka, wa, wa, walijaribu kufuata ile lorry ndio waone magari zingine kuwa waondoke lakini ile lorry ilikuwa kwa speed ya juu ilis ili fail brakes now, Masante Sana, that is uh, Caroline Charutich from the St. John's Ambulance, one of the first responders to that particular accident at Salga on the Nakuru Eldoret Highway, one of the infamous, most infamous black spots on that uh, highway, just telling us what's the latest from that, telling us they were able to count 13 who lost their uh, lives uh, when they first arrived on the scene. We are still keeping tabs on that story. It is a very sad developing story a lot of accidents in the last three days or so, and that is what we have been focusing on here on the big story tonight. Uh, let, let, as we wind up uh, this conversation, by our Director General, um, let's talk solutions. I mean, uh, Kenyans, when they point fingers at NTSA, at the police, at the authorities, mm -hmm. they always ask this question, 
what is the solution? What are the solutions? Are we ever going to get to a point where we see that the numbers are actually you know, decreasing, the number of people who lose their lives on, on, on the roads, who get injured, get maimed on the roads, actually reduces? Yes, it is possible. And uh, the only way that it's going to happen is if we change our behavior. The truth of the matter is this is a societal problem. And to try to shift blame to say NTSA, to say the police, that is not, the, that is not where the problem is. The driver who drives that vehicle is responsible for that vehicle. Whatever he chooses to do on that vehicle will either cause an accident or will save lives. So I think the beginning point is to, we must agree that we must change our behavior. And I can give a very good example. Whenever we are carrying out operations, you find people texting one another through social media, NTSA are in such and such a place. You find motorists blinking at one another that they are ahead of them. Those, as long as we have that kind of an attitude, then we have a challenge ahead of us. We must know that we are not helping our fellow citizens by encouraging them to break the law and get away with it. So it must begin from there. And the driver to take personal responsibility on whatever happens on the road. All right. Because at no point will we ever have enough police officers or NTS officers to man each and every corner of this road in this country. So we don't have to, be, uh, to, be, to, to see officers so that we, we follow the law. It, we must do it even without seeing anybody. Because it is our life. And the majority of the people actually who end up dying are the same drivers. So I think to me that is what we need to address. All right, Mr. Gitao, from your perspective, if I can get your closing remarks on this very important discussion. Well, it's a, certainly a very sad uh, situation that we are going through. Uh, it affects a lot of people in our country, uh, those that are directly uh, impacted by loss of dear ones or themselves uh, injured. Um, like uh, our colleague uh, says, uh, Mr. Major, Major, it is the responsibility of the individual to ensure that uh, he is alert, he's able to do what is required on the road, and beyond that to know that he has a responsibility for the other uh, co-travelers or those who are using the same road. And more importantly, we must uh, start to, to think about our own responsibility as a nation where we do not just follow the law or just uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, watch out for the authorities, but know that uh, as a person you are a care, I mean, you are uh, responsible, you are responsible for your brother. All right. You, yeah. Thank you. Sophia, what is your final remark on, on, from an emergency response perspective? Um, if this season and going forward, if you do come across uh, an accident scene, please, uh, before doing anything else, call emergency numbers so that we get the specialized uh, assistance and response that is required and get yourself first aid trained. All right. Mr. Francis, with your final remarks, and also if I can ask you, do you think the NTSA needs to change tack in any way that they do their work? Well, I think we, from, from what we have uh, analyzed, we, we now have looked at data, and uh, our interventions are data-led. It is to continuously follow some of these issues that I said, like the four E's of road safety. Those are the issues that we have to consistently and persis persistently pursue. That is the only way we can reverse this. Unfortunately, right. uh, this is happening. All right. uh, and uh, it's going to take a while before behavior changes, but we are not about to relent. We will pursue this thing until we see a difference in behavior on our citizens. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on this discussion. Uh, Francis Major, Director General of the National Transport and Safety Authority. We also did have Sophia Varji from the Kenya Red Cross, uh, one of the first responders in, in terms of emergency response, and also Joseph Kitao, a psychologist. We also did talk to uh, Caroline Cherotich from the St. John's Ambulance in Nakuru. Of course, she did. Uh, she's still following up on what has been happening at Salga, where we understand 17 people have lost their lives. 16, according to the NTSA. Our lead reporter tonight was Dan Kanhamba. Thank you for joining us here on The Big Story, a big story, developing story, that we continue to follow on as uh, for, uh, following that high number of people losing their lives on the roads over the last three days. Thank you for watching. I'm Ben Kitili. Up next is KTN Prime.